Hello, my fellow gnomes, and welcome to episode 8 of Doors. It has been a long time coming, but it is finally here. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to add in specific rooms to your game, as well as how to make a little buffering system to dynamically load in and out sections of the map. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we're back inside the project, pretty much exactly the same as we left off in episode 7. You will see we've got two new rooms though. Uh, we've got this room over here, which I've called the kitchen. Um, this is, is going to be a specific room that we want to place at a specific number. Um, so this could be a library, as you see in the Real Doors game, at room 50. But we've got our kitchen over here. And then I've also got, it's really kind of a template at the moment, but the final room, which just says, you win in text and you can step into the light. Um, well, they haven't really got much here. But at the moment, if we want to place them uh, at a specific position, we can't really do that, right? Because if I click run, then we just generate this huge long chain right through to 100. Uh, so how can we go about doing that? Well, first of all, I'm just going to go into my room info and make sure we add in any new rooms that we add. So I've added in, in addition to the start room, I have my end room, or no, it's called final room. We've got to make sure it has the exact same name as in our rooms folder. So final room, and also I've added in a kitchen. Now the weight for the, all of these is going to be zero because we don't want them to dynamically get generated for us. Instead, we want to specifically place them at the exact point in the chain that we want. So let's head into our server script now. Now at the moment we're just generating number between 2 and 100 for all of our subsequent rooms. Uh, so let's flash this out with a bit more logic. First of all, I don't really like having this magic number hard-coded. So we're going to clearly state that the max rooms is equal to 100. Or in fact we could turn this down a bit just for testing purposes. Let's go down to 25. So then we'll do a number between 2 and max rooms. But really, it's a bit confusing to start at 2. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because we have this previous room inserted, which means that technically the start room is room 1, and then this is room 2, even though it's the first room on the door. And that's that's all a bit confusing. So to clear up our numbering system, uh, instead we're going to set this as the 0th room. So if we add in square brackets 0 equals, so we're going to set that as the 0th room, and then the subsequent room will be 1. So let's change our loop to start at 1. And then we're probably going to have an issue with our doors numbering there. So we have 1, and then we're going to have 1 again. So let's just fix that, um, because we hard-coded the first door. Let's just go into our little room module script, go down to the generate function, and when we add in the door.new, we're just going to add on plus one to that number. So now if I hit run, and we've generated our 25 rooms, and if we check the numbering on the doors, we've got one, two, three, and everything lines up as we'd expect. So how can we place our specific rooms along that chain? Well, going back into our server script, Instead of just having our generated rooms table, we're going to have an additional table called local specific rooms. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set a number that we want things to appear at. So if you want something to appear at, say, room 5, then we just set the name that we want. So in our case, we want kitchen. And then at the very end room, so in this case the value of max rooms, we want to have our final room, um, but we're not actually doing anything with that information yet. So let's send this specific room as an argument to the room.generate function. So we'll add in a new argument, specific rooms i, so whatever number on the loop we are. Now, considering we're doing between 1 and uh, max rooms, which is 25, most of the time, specific rooms i is going to equal nil. Right, because we only have two values, one at 5 and one at 25, so everything else is going to be nil. But if it is 5 or 25, then it's going to return kitchen or final room. So with that in mind, let's go into our room.generate function now. 
Now we can see we were just assuming we could immediately start getting a random room, but we don't really want to do that anymore. So let's prepare for our new parameter, which will be the, the name of the specific rooms. We call the specific room name. And then let's check, do we have a specific room name? And if we do, does it actually exist in the rooms folder? We got the right name. So let's say and workspace dot rooms find first child specific room name. So if it exists, then we can probably copy it. And autocomplete has suggested something for us that is actually uh, perfect. So the new room will equal workspace dot rooms that specific room name and clone it. And else, if either we haven't got a name or it doesn't exist for some reason then in that case, we can actually get the random room as before. So let's take this, copy and paste it in. Now we want to have new room as variable shared by both of these. So this is going to be equal to nil initially. Uh, and then we'll move the local from down here so that we're not creating a brand new variable within this blocked scope. So now if we hit run, what we should hopefully see is our rooms appearing. So we set our kitchen to be at room five. So let's see, we've got, you know, one, two, three, four, and five, and into the kitchen area. Cool. And at the very end, at room 25, we'll see we haven't actually got the final room yet. We've got a little error down in the output. Exit is not a valid member of model final room. So let's hit stop and let's see what the problem could be there. On line 98, well, we see we're doing all this logic here and we're just assuming that we have an exit part, but obviously our final room doesn't have an exit. So we should probably check for that. So let's wrap it in an if statement. If new room find first child exit, if we do, then we can do all of this logic as before. Um, but otherwise, we don't need a new door. We don't need any keys. We don't need any of this stuff. We just want to add it into the folder and return it. So let's hit run again. And now we should see at the very end, here we are. We have our exit room at room 25. You win. And of course, if I want, I can play about with these numbers. So if I hit stop and let's set the max rooms back to 100 now. And this time I want my kitchen at say room 50. And if we hit run and once it's generated, we should see all the way over there. I think that is the kitchen. There we go, 50. And there's the kitchen. And in the far distance, we have 99 and 100, you win. Cool. But it's probably not the most uh, efficient way of generating everything all at once. Because if a player is near the end of the maze, we don't really need the server to keep all of this past stuff in memory. It'd be kind of nice if we could just generate a little bit of the chain at a time. So beneath our max rooms value, let's create a new one and we'll just call this room buffer. And we're going to set this to five. So we want to generate sort of five rooms ahead of the player and then destroy anything that's more than five behind them. So instead of generating all the rooms at once, we're just going to generate up to the room buffer. And then we can generate new rooms for them inside the player enter event. Now, previously we were just using this uh, for monster spawning, but we can do this for generating the rooms too. So let's get the future room. So this will be whatever the current number is plus the buffer. Now, if that future room is less than or equal to the max room, because we don't want to generate too many rooms, of course, then we can go about and add it. So we can go and copy this line like so and replacing I with the value of future room. So now if we hit run, we can see we've got the first five rooms. If we hit play uh, and we move into the first room, what we should see if I go back onto the server, 
So we've got this long bit, kind of like an L shape coming around. And let's progress through a few more rooms back on the client. And then into room three. Let's go back to the server now and we see, oh, we've generated some more rooms for us. It's now continuing around the corner and down the stairs. Or I think this is going to spawn the shadow, so we're going to have to hide. Oh. But if we go back onto the server, we now see it's continued down the line. So that's cool, but we're not removing any rooms behind us. So that's super simple. We'll just create another variable called local discard room. And that will be equal to the current number on minus the room buffer. Now, as long as that discard room is greater than one, or greater than zero, sorry, greater than zero, then we can remove it. So we don't want to remove our start room, but everything else we can really go ahead and remove. So let's get our generated rooms folder. Get the discard room and we'll call the destroy method uh, and then we can set that to nil as well because we don't even need it in our table anymore so let's hit play start progressing through the rooms forward into six and seven and if we go back onto the server we should see our start room we're actually now missing a few rooms we so we've unloaded those that we didn't need and the more we keep progressing through, we're actually going to keep unloading all of these rooms. And there we go. We see now we've unloaded a bunch of rooms and now we're only keeping this much. So this much buffer will keep loaded in and the rest we don't need. Pretty cool. Uh, now, one thing to bear in mind doing this dynamic generation is to think of our monster. So Shadow currently, he appears, let's see, down he appears on in our server script. Uh, well, on every fourth room we're doing it currently, uh, and he only goes goes to the current room that we're inside, and then run one room ahead. So what we might want to do is we could make him go a few rooms ahead, but we can't go more than the buffer. So for instance, we could say local max travel equals three for three rooms, and then for i equals zero travel do, and we could do the blackout for number plus i and then we'll send that max travel to our shadow mob and then inside of shadow when it's doing its navigation it uses this max num which currently inside the new it just is the number plus one but let's make it equal to have a max travel param and then we can say number plus max travel so this will ensure even if we're moving really fast we're not actually going to be able to outrun the the monster just by running into the next room all right if we, even if we run a few rooms ahead we're still going to get killed now and we can't actually find our way back because the rooms have unloaded and one more thing to tweak with shadow he's currently only opening the very last door but it probably make more sense if he opens every door he goes through. So let's remove these two lines and then inside our navigate function we can say room dot door dot open event fire. And we'll probably turn down the probability too. We don't need him spawning in every fourth room. Let's turn it down to eight. And now we should see he will always open all of the doors along the way so he's opened five six shadow has opened seven so now we have our room system with our specific rooms added in our game is coming together we've got our locks but we haven't got anything else in any of these drawers so in the next episode we should probably add some coins that we can get for ourselves and maybe a few new items as well for the player to find in those drawers rather than just looking like empty husks. But that's about it for this episode. If you found it helpful, leave a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for future episodes which are on their way. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.